to this flavor. Yeah. And how do we do it with real butter and real ingredients yeah, and real, yeah. you know, and, you know, and then punch them out like that. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with um, uh, one of the most famous things at uh, McCready's or Husk was uh, the Snickers bar. Right. And it's like a deconstructed Snickers bar. So it's like, you know, he's just taking things we know and then having fun with it. Right. So, you know, yeah. You know, always, cooking for your audience. Yeah, too. Exactly. You know, you, you have to, you yeah. know. Um, cook for your audience. Mm-hmm. That's that's probably the biggest thing I learned coming to Newport Vineyards. Yeah, you know, is you know, you worked in Newport. Mm-hmm. You you think it's you think big you can make, Yeah, you, you think, think it's a big leagues. Yeah, no, no, you know, I mean, and you think that uh, sometimes you you know, at Tallulah's sake, for yeah. you know, it's closed now because of that reason. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. it's like. I have, you, Jake you, and I have had many yeah, conversations only, about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you can only feed about four people in town want to have that kind of food, and everybody else wants to eat fucking right. barking scab and whatever the fuck other yeah, restaurants are yeah, all there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we do is, all right, let's take the food that they recognize and, and make it right. And let's make the the best one. Yeah, yeah, you know, let's make it the way we know how to make the it. The best chowder. Yeah, the, the best yeah, fucking. Yeah. yeah, let's make chowder. You know, let's, you know, get quahogs and cure our own bit. Uh, you know, fat back and, you know, and potatoes that my buddy grew up the road and, you know, and, but it's still chowder, you know, and yeah. heavy cream from Wright's Dairy, you know, just yeah. like really good, real shit. And at the end of the day, it's chowder and half our guests don't even realize the work that went into it. Yeah. But we don't do it for them. Yeah. You know, we cook for us. Yeah. You know, and, and that's how, you know, we instruct the team, you know, we cook for us, you know, um, in the end of the day though, we get great technique into way more mouths yeah than when i did fine dining you know and you're doing 50 covers you know so you're getting great food into 50 people but i can get great food into 500 people got you you know with the same principles Mm -hmm. you know and the same you know passion you know and you know um and hopefully give them similar service you know like they feel the same when they leave right you know like I know I've eaten Michelin and been like, what the fuck? You know, like, that was amazing and the service and that. And But I've also been to a barbecue joint in North Carolina where I'm like, what the fuck in the service? And, you know, like, you know, the same deal. And it was in styrofoam, you yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I like that, yeah. You know, so, you know, because the passion. Yeah. You know, I, I feel that, you know. I'm like, if you're slinging it at McDonald's and you're, like, making the best goddamn Big Mac you can make with the best ingredients, and you're no different than me. Yeah. You know, if that's, you're doing the best you can with the ingredients you got, you know, then, then what makes you any different than any other one of us? You I know, like, that, yeah. you know, like, you're putting Dude, your soul into it. It's true, man. Like, there was a difference. Uh, when I worked at KFC, there was a difference in cooks. Right. You know, like, we, you know, I won't say his name, but uh, he used to be a heroin addict. And it was like, he, he would cook, right? Right. And then we had this high school kid that would cook. And it's like the high school kid's food was always better than the fucking heroin addict's food. Because he cared. He cared. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, I'm going to do this the right way. Where right. the other guy was like, fucking throw it in there. The spice mix was never mixed all the way. It was right, <laughs> it's like, right, bro, right. come on, man. Right. And you, know, <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? And the audience that goes to KFC, they deserve that. That's yeah. what, you know, they deserve yeah. good. You know, yeah. why shouldn't they get someone who puts all their heart and soul into it? You know that you know their their money's hard earned too. Exactly. You know, yeah. like so. That. You know, and that's that's how we look at it. You know, yeah. um, it took me a while to get that way. You know, to understand that because you know the chef mindset of no, you can eat my food the way I want it. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and you know, and then you know, and the guests pushing back a little bit yeah. helps. You know, Always. you know, it, it, you got to listen to them. If you don't, yeah. you know, I mean. Restaurants are a living, breathing thing, and it'll swallow you alive if you don't move with it. Yeah, you know, you gotta evolve with it. You mm-hmm. know, they, you know, I mean, I'm sure even at you know the restaurant, you saw evolution. You yeah. know, as you know, times changed, That's and true. you know, you know, you you have to evolve. I mean, you know, you guys talked about beards. You know, it's yeah. all part of evolution. You know, like all that seriousness. You know, you know, kind of just take it back a little and let the food do its thing. Exactly. You know, just let yeah. the food. It do became its thing. about us for like. A long fucking time. A long fucking time. Yeah, and I think that that's uh, changing now. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's you know. about everybody. Now. Well, that's just it. It's about the group. I mean, yeah. Fuck, man. I got this dude Jesus. He's the only one that's still on the crew here, from when I started. Yeah. The only holdover from the old crew. He does dishes, and my butthole releases when he walks through the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. you know, like all right, Jesus is here. We're all good. Yeah. You know, like, life is going to be good. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, you know, and 
there's only you know there's 35 people on the team and there's you know a hundred and something people in front of us the owners the you know one of my best friends is you know the food and beverage director she's become like my sister there's only one person every day i go did jesus eat today yeah <laughs> you know like i know what you're talking about, you know yeah. i'm like did we feed jesus today yeah like you know like dishwashers you know. don't get the respect they deserve no um, i mean the fact is the first question i ask the dishwasher when i meet a new one i'm like hey how you doing you know what's your name and then i'm like where where were you working before you came here just now because you know that yeah. they're working in the morning and then going somewhere else at night and working like all damn day long all for their kids for their family Back home in Mexico or yeah, back yeah, home in yeah. Guatemala. Jesus is Guatemala. Is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jesus, you know, he does all day landscapes. And then yeah. comes here at 6 o'clock and grinds <laughs> dish. And when I first got here, I was like, this dude needs a partner. Like, this restaurant's way too busy for him. And I got him a partner, and he got pissed. Yeah. He's like, I got this by myself. Yeah, like, bro. You know, back off. Yeah. It's like, so, <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, you know, like, even you when... You can't pan- argue there. Yeah, yeah. Even when pandemic hit, like, they had him build a stone wall out here. We're like... Keep this dude in the loop. Yeah, <laughs> you keep know, him like, busy. Yeah, yeah exactly. keep him paid, you yep. know, because, I, yeah, he's like, you know, and, and that's just it. You know, like, without those people, you're, you know, you're just grooving along. Yeah, that's know? true. You know, you're not doing right. And it becomes more about us instead yeah. of about the team. They're the embodiment of hard work. Yeah. And and the, the cool thing about a restaurant is for everybody from different backgrounds comes in yep. and meets this person. And you're like, I am nothing. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, like yeah. I don't do enough. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So where were we? We were uh, oh, Mill Wharf. I was at Mill yeah, Wharf. Mill right? Wharf. Yeah. So, so Johnny Rotten had me. You know, so we, so I went and became a line cook. Gotcha. You know, and like I started in fry, you know, fry ovens, and so this place had upscale casual open kitchen, yeah. all wood fire, no gas in that kitchen, big forno three bay grill rotisserie on a platform in the dining room and then the back kitchen serviced a pub upstairs like a fisherman's pub upstairs and then serviced saute for the upscale restaurant right so headsets pick up table five table five's not ready you know like the two kitchens communicating johnny rotten leaves and they bring in this new guy joe aniskevitz and joe comes in joe was in the Sheridan, Boston, fine dining. His chef mentor was on New York City. I don't remember his name. Fred, I think. I don't remember. Yeah. But, like, Joe came in was like, why isn't everybody in chef coats? Why isn't, like, you know, that yeah. upscale, like, you know, what do you mean you don't own your own knives? So, like, you yeah. know, what do you mean you don't have plating tools, you know? Um, and Joe also came in and got rid of all the dead weight of the place. Got rid of all, like, got rid of all the, the, the pirates. Yeah. And he grabbed me, and he was like, you're a really talented kid. He goes, you're going to be sous chef. I was 20. Yeah. I was like, what? He goes, yeah, you're going to work the wood grill. I never lit a fire. You know, I, I mean, that's not true. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I, we had a wood stove in my house, but now yeah. I'm working the wood grill. Yeah. Like, I just came from Dunkin' Donuts and Diet Fresh. Now I'm working the wood grill, and he's going to bring in all this crazy technique and paint played, um, plate painting and you know all kinds of you know just ring molds and you know and but we were doing 500 covers and it was a wood fire kitchen i go through 10 bags of charcoal you know hardwood in a service just getting destroyed destroyed i puke every night after service from the adrenaline and dehydration yeah you know you you know you'd have 70 salmon for service yeah. you'd have you know 80 swordfish for service you'd have you know place people put the boats right up you know um you'd have and and the food was you know for back then it was a lot of steps for back then like yeah. you know we had this salmon dish where it was like mirror the plate with red pepper coulis and then squeeze bottle of melted chev and you swirled through the coulis and then drew in it yeah, yeah, yeah. and then a ring mold of risotto that you were doing you were firing on the wood grill yeah like you were heating your you know doing all your sides for yourself on the grill um and then zucchini noodles sauteed and then the salmon you know and you plate 60 of those a night you know and that was one dish and you'd had like nine dishes on your station and radioing back and forth and people coming up you know the bar was right there and uh you know it was just it was insanity and i was i had been doing that and diet fresh so now i was working six at night six in the morning 
to two in the afternoon at Diet Fresh and then going to the Mill Wharf and cooking till midnight. Right. And then partying. Yeah. And then I started showing up late at Diet Fresh. Mm. But I also started to get cocky. Heard. I was starting to get really cocky because I was, I was starting to realize that, holy shit, I'm kind of good at this. Yeah. You know, and one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life and the only time I've ever been fired is I had been going in late to Diet Fresh constantly. Just couldn't get out of bed and do the half-hour commute. I showed up one time six hours late. Yeah. And I walked into the kitchen, and the chef at the time, Joe, started screaming at me. And I looked at him in front of the whole crew, and I said, what are you going to do? I'm the best you got. And he was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And if anyone had ever said that to me now, I, I would probably have lost my mind. Yeah. You know, but I was such a just dumb, arrogant, cocky, you know, thought I was the shit kid. Yeah. You know, um, and I actually called Joe the next day because we were actually friends to this day. We, we speak. He sells food and we know each other, you know. And I called and apologized the next day and, like, asked for my job back. And he was like, no. He's like, no way. He's like, nope, you need to learn. Yeah. And it was probably one of the best lessons I've ever got. Yeah. You know, like. Apology accepted, you're still fired. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know, like, I, I was, you know, I was, you know, like, like the reality hit of, like, what a fucking idiot I yeah. am, you know. Um, but, I, but then I was, like, 100% in at Millwharf. Like, you know, this is, you know, to, I moved to Situate. Um. And I was working there with this crew. Oh, yeah, I started telling you, this guy Craig was working with me. I just brought Craig back. Craig worked with us. I was a line cook. Craig come on right out of high school Yeah. Um, and cooked with us. He told the crew, he said, first day I ever met Chef, I walked in the, ki- the change room. He was kicking the barrel, swearing. I was just a line cook. And he's like, what's the matter, man? What's the matter? And I'm like, I go to a fucking hospital. And he's like, why? What happened? And I took my towel off and blood started squirting out of my hand. Yeah. I had cut myself and Johnny Rotten was a chef at the time was like, he's like, let me see, let me see. And I took it off and it squirted, hit him in the glasses. <laughs> and he's like, you go to the fucking hospital and you get that stitched up. And if you're not back by service, you're fired. Yeah. And I remember going to the hospital and, and telling a nurse, you know, I need to get back for service. Chef's like going to fire me. And they're like, no, it's okay. You know, like workman's call. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there is no, like chef's going to kill me. Like, so if you don't stitch me up, I'm going to CVS and I'm going to do it myself. So they stitched me up and I went back and worked saute like this with my hand fucking bandaged up, you know, because that's, you know, that was how it was, you know, if you wanted your spot. If not, someone's going to take your spot, you know, in that kitchen. So we ground through that and then Joe came on and he made me sous chef and they got rid of the pastry chef because they were like, well, we can double dip with Andy. So I was doing the pastry work and the sous chef work. And crushing the outdoor, you know, that, that open kitchen. And it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. I mean, just summertime, just getting destroyed, you know, yeah. people pulling their boats up. And, you know, in the winter, it was, you know, hibernation, but you still worked. Um, but Ken Oringer used to come and sit at our bar. Right. And uh, with my fishmonger. And Ken come up to me one day. It was like, you want to come work for me at Tosca? And so I went and staged. Yeah. And I staged with Ken, and this was like no talking in the kitchen. You know, this was like total yeah. culture shock to me. You're but like, like staging, you make a joke, and you're like, anyone? No? Okay. It's just. Ken, he, actually, <laughs> I think the sous chef said to me, he's like, we don't talk about anything but food in this kitchen. Heard. Heard. And I was like, all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and I just came from a place where, like, you know, you barely wore your, you know, your uniform, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, like, it was, you know, yeah. you know, as hard as Joe tried to button us up. It was still just chaos. So at the time, I, didn't, I had lost my license because I drove like a maniac everywhere. And, and so I didn't have a license. And Tosca was a little too far to, for me to walk, you know. And Ken was like, I really want you on my team. You know, this is Kenny O. Yeah. You know, he's like, I want you on my team. I'll drive you to work. And something just didn't sit right with me. Like, yeah, till I piss you off or something. And then it's you didn't make your shift, you know. So I didn't take the job. A year later, Ken, like, gets nominated or wins the Beard Award. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, Phew. fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Damn. missed that one, you yeah. know. Um, and actually, I think I was a dickhead and might have said to Joe, oh, boy, I should have taken that job. You know, yeah. t- telling my, my it, first mentor it, that, yeah. you know, like. But, again, I, 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 I was so obtuse because kitchens were my life. Like, you know, there was no filter because I grew up 
in the dirty kitchen, you know, like there was, I, I didn't know any better, you yeah. know, you just said whatever the fuck.